Greetings, everybody. This should be the last study in, on the Temple series. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Revelation. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 14. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb, a lamb, the lamb of God, right? stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So here's the hundred forty four thousand with uh, their with the with the father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and uh, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were were not defiled with women. So evidently these are men, right? For they are virgins. Now, don't don't get it wrong. A man being with a woman, husband and wife does not make him defiled. But uh, there are women out there like Jezebel who will defile you. But these are virgins. I suppose because spiritually they wanted to serve the Lord more than they wanted to serve the pleasure of the flesh. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, men being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Well, that counts me out. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why twice? Why did they say Babylon has fallen, is fallen? Well, once Babylon, the city, fell physically, but then spiritually, Babylon lived on. So, is fallen physically, is fallen spiritually. See, Babylon was the original, well, the Tower of Babel, that was, that was the beginning of Babylon. That's where Babylon was, where God confused the languages. Babel even means, Babel, Babel, it means confusion. That's exactly what it means. A lot of Old Testament words have meanings that are very, very applicable and important. 
So Babylon was the beginning of the world kingdoms and her harlotries, I guess you could say, spread pretty much throughout the whole world. And there's a big thing going on. Oh, well, you know, Babylon's the United States or, or Babylon is Rome. You know, people, uh, I did a complete Bible study on Mystery Babylon the Great. In Revelation, the Bible plainly tells you that Babylon killed the prophets and the blood of saints. God never sent his prophets to the United States and never sent his prophets to Rome. God sent his prophets to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a whore right now. Think about it. They rejected Christ. Christ went to Jerusalem. He taught in the temple. Generally, as a whole, they rejected their Messiah. The prophets were sent to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem killed them. What can I tell you? But I did an entire Bible study on that. I mean, it's, it's plain as day. If you got eyes to hear, ear, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear. But if you want to listen to Stephen Anderson or uh, everybody else that tells you, you know, it's Rome or whatever, you know, go for it. But God wanted Jerusalem to be the spiritual capital of his people. And today it's anything but. So, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. If you want to know what Jerusalem, that great city, believes, look up Kabbalah, K-A-B-A-L-L-A-H. I've also seen it spelled with a Q, and I've also seen it spelled with a CH at the beginning. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, full strength, right? Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. So if there's holy angels, you know there's going to be unholy angels. And the smoke of their torment Ascendeth up forever and ever, forever and ever. That's a long time, you know. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, Satan doesn't care if you keep the commandments if you don't have Jesus. And he doesn't care if you believe in Jesus if you don't keep the commandments. Which commandments? The two commandments. Remember, I, I've said it over and over and over and over and over, but I'll say it again. Somebody asked Jesus what was the great commandment in the law. And I'm paraphrasing. Jesus said, um, to love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. On these hang all the laws and the prophets. 
On those two laws hang all the law and the prophets. If you want to keep the Sabbath, that's great. You know, if you love the Lord, you're not going to worship the beast. And if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal his wife. You're not going to steal his stuff. You're not going to try to kill him. So, you know, basically the Ten Commandments are boiled down to two. And hopefully you got enough sense not to uh, live next door to a bunch of Satanists. And don't take the mark of their God and worship their God. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Got to have both. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I believe this is talking about those that are dying in the tribulation for their faith. That's my take on it. I, you know, I could be wrong. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Now, what was a sickle used for? It was like a giant knife that they used to harvest crops with. And another angel came out of the temple. Now, this is the temple in heaven. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Huh. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's uh, uh, even unto the horse bridle by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. People, that's a lot of blood. I mean, that's like almost like a flood of Noah type blood type thing. All right, so what is this uh, harvest and the sickle and all that stuff? Well, let's go to Matthew 13. I think this will shed some light. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he, Jesus, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, no, 
Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Tell that to the pre-tribbers. Gather ye together first the tares, the weeds. The, the weeds get gathered first, people. Have you noticed how much the, the churches lie to us? Oh, yeah. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let's go down to verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare or explain, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Pretty explanatory, huh? And it ties right into Revelation 14. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels and shall gather together out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear. Let him hear. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 15. We read 14, now we're going to read 15. Revelation chapters. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Now, what is this uh, song of Moses? Well, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. In other words, he's going to die. And this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them. Uh, any of this sound familiar, people? Let's continue. So that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all 
the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that the song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. In other words, when they get fat and happy, they're going to forget all about the Lord that blessed them, that let them get fat and happy. Then they're going to turn to other gods. Oh, yeah. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouth of their seed. For I know their imagination, which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, and Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the, the side of and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. What are, what's another way of saying the latter days? The end times. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Does any of this sound familiar? And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. All right, let's flip the page. Deuteronomy 32, next chapter. This is the song. This is the song of Moses that we were just read about in Revelation. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Now, this is the Lord. This isn't Moses. My doctrine. Oh, doctrine. Is doctrine important? Yeah, doctrine is important. When somebody asks you, well, who is Jesus? Is Jesus just a mere man? Is he a prophet? Or is he God in the flesh? What you do with Jesus is, as doctrine, is important. Um, there's many over in the Middle East that say he's a deceiver, a false prophet. What do you think uh, their doctrine, how do you think they're going to end up with their doctrine? Doctrine's important. I've heard people say, well, you know, doctrine's not important as long as you've got it in your heart. Well, What's in your heart? You know? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. 
because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Remember, I did a whole study on the rock. Paul said, and that rock was Christ. Sorry, Catholic Church, not Peter. I like Peter. I'm looking forward to seeing him one day and put my arm around his shoulder, maybe, but uh, Peter's not the rock. Christ is. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he thy father that have bought thee? Hath not he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Listen to this carefully, people. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated, separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Who separated the sons of Adam? The Lord. Who wants to mix us all together and flood our lands with heathen aliens? Well, that's the other guy. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Uh, but the pastor told me it was the whole world. Well, what does your pastor know? Verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him to ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the field, and made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine. What's kine? K-I-N-E? That's an old English word for cattle or cow. Butter of kine and milk of sheep and fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. The pure blood of the grape. What did Jesus give his disciples at the Last Supper? Bread, which is my body, and take ye this cup, drink all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament, right? A lot of symbolism in the Old Testament. A lot. I mean, here it is. We're reading the book of Revelation. They're talking about the Song of Moses. And if you'd never bothered to read the Old Testament, because that's the book of the Jews, and that doesn't apply to us because we're the New Testament church. Well, I've heard that a bunch of times. But if you believe that and paid attention to that and did that, not bothered to read the Old Testament, You'd read that in the New, you know, Book of Revelation, the Song of Moses, and you'd be like, uh, what's that? I never heard of that before. Moses wrote a song? Far out, man. I wonder if he played a guitar, too. I know, I'm being crazy. Verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, 
With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods, plural, whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. And if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll uh, tell you, Hell means, oh, that just means the grave, you know. There is no hell. You know, a loving, kind God would never let his, his creation burn in hell. That's, that's just plain evil. Uh, ask him about Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Yeah, see what they say. Well, I'll have to look that up in my Watchtower literature because I, I don't know what they teach. No, I don't care what they teach. What do you think? Sodom and Gomorrah? You know, fire and brimstone? Yeah. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Second Peter chapter 3 comes to mind where it says the earth will melt with fervent heat. Oh, yeah. Verse 23, I will heap mischiefs on, upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Arrows. What, what's this about arrows? Ah, well, here we go. Let's, let's look up arrows real quick. Well, if you want to know what these arrows are, Ezekiel 5.16 gives you a clue. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows, the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, for I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. Arrows, the evil arrows of famine. All right, back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 20, uh, 23. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Uh, in Revelation, isn't one of the plagues where the, the sun scorches and burns the people with heat? Oh yeah, I believe in global warming. And God's going to send it upon them. Oh yeah. Verse 25. Oh, I did a, I did a, I did a Bible study on this one. The sword without and terror, terror within. Matter of fact, this was one of the first Bible studies I did after 9-11. The sword without and terror, terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely 
and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Now this is the, the heathen speaking. Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Now he's talking about Israel again. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock. Even, uh, even our enemies themselves being judges. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, our enemies will tell you our God is different than their God. Verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Uh, when Jesus was on the cross and was thirsty, what did they give him on a sponge? Gall mixed with vinegar. What happens when you take grape juice and it spoils? It turns to vinegar, right? Wine, when it goes bad, turns to vinegar. And they mixed it with gall. Do you see a connection there? Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of, drumroll, dragons. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. You know what an asp is? An extremely dangerous viper. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifice and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Oh yeah, you want to serve the devil? And when bad things happen to you, let the devil come and, and protect you. Huh, see how that works. Verse 39, See now that I, even I, am he. There is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I will lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take Hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Yeah, there's people that hate the Lord. And your churches uh, think uh, God loves them. Really, they do. Well, you know, God loves everybody and he wants everybody to be saved. Have you ever heard that before? No, God has enemies. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song. In the ears of the people, he and 
Hoshea the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. Oh yeah. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, that ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life, and through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. So, uh, I guess we could stop here. All right, let's go back to Revelation 15, verse 3. And they sing. Well, let's go back to verse 1. Revelation verse 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Now these are the overcomers that died for their faith, that didn't take the mark of the beast. Verse 3, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and magnify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple, the temple, this is the temple series, right? The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the te temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. All right, let's flip the page, go to Revelation 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying, out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now remember, all these uh, people on earth had killed God's servants, his saints. Verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Uh, let me let you in on a little thing here. I don't know if this is true. This is just a Bob theory. And, a, you know, a theory is just, you know, something that a, somebody that's semi-educated, it's an educated guess, basically. If, big if, if the mark of the beast ends up being a microchip, the one they currently have in production, from what I understand, um, they're using lithium to uh, as a battery source for it, for a capacitor, for, you know, to store the energy. And I was told by somebody that's into all this kind of stuff that uh, if the microchip broke and the lithium leaked out with all the components that it would cause a, a very grievous sore. So I don't know how true that is. I'm just throwing that out there. 
you know, could be something totally different. Maybe it'll be that vaccine with the luciferase, luciferase or whatever it is. So, so those that worship the beast and take his mark and worship the image are going to get a, a, a really bad sore. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. See, this is just like the plague of Egypt, when Moses, uh, the waters turned to blood for Moses. Of course, it was by the hand of God, but the Lord had Moses do it. And I heard, verse 5, and I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Didn't we just read that in the Song of Moses? Oh, yeah. All the plagues of, in the Song of Moses happen in Revelation. Verse 9, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not, to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Remember in Egypt, they were plagued with darkness, but the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, had sun. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Oh, don't worry, the Antichrist, he's, he's going to be our Messiah. He's going to save us. Yeah, right. Verse 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be, pre be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The unholy trinity, people. Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You see, when Christ comes, he's going to come to Jerusalem with his army. And uh, that's probably what Trump's space force is. He's going to try to fight Christ in the air when he comes. And then when he blows past that <laughs> so uh and he makes it to jerusalem well the kings of the east are going to be there waiting for him to try to stop him um uh, it's probably going to be a very short battle what do you think for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that day, great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. You know why it says called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon? Because the New Testament was written in Greek. That's why. So it tells you in the Hebrew what it is called. Because if it was called, if it was written in Hebrew and called Armageddon, there'd be no need to say 
And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. But it wasn't. It was written in Greek. That's why he specifies it. Because all the true Hebrews will know what Armageddon is. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great noise out of the temple of heaven, a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. When Christ was on the cross, just before he died, he says, It is finished. Well, now it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. That must have been a, you know, you've heard of uh, earthquakes on the Richter scale, you know, 1 to 10. This sounds like about a 35 to me. But Bob, they don't have a, it doesn't go up to 35. Well, not yet. All the islands are going to sink, and there's not going to be any mountains, because they're going to be leveled. Verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Uh, you know what a talent weighs? About 70 pounds. For those of you in the EU, that's about 32 kilograms. Yeah. I don't know what's worse, a talent falling on your head or, or a bowling ball. Bowling balls only weigh 12 pounds. <laughs> And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hill, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. All right, so uh, the Lord reaped the harvest of the earth, gathered his saints, burned up the wicked. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21 and close this study out. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true. And faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is, uh, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall 
and had a wall great and high. And you better believe that Donald Trump is not going to build this wall. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There's 12 gates, people. There's not a 13th non-Jew Gentile gate. Or if there is, can you show me? Because I can't find it anywhere. There's 12 gates, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I don't think Judas is in there. What do you, th what do you think? And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Now, if I can trust Wikipedia, Wikipedia, one furlong is 660 feet, 220 yards, or 200 meters. That's if we can trust Wikipedia. So... Let's see. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof and 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a chrysophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophrophroph
So, I mean, it's it's amazing. Sometimes my mind's just blank, and I, you know, I'm like, well, I've done that Bible study, and I've done this one, and, you know, and I'm like, well, I've pretty much covered a lot of things, and then, I don't know, I'll be doing something, you know, walking or taking a shower or something, and then just something pops into my brain, you know, for a Bible study. So, but uh, I, I might be taking a break, so... And like I say, if anybody's interested in copies of all my Bible studies, um, write me because I'm hoping the Lord will one day tell me where to go and what to do. Because right now I just don't think I'm where I should be with the Lord. But then again, I haven't gotten a confirmation or whatever. And, uh, you know, I thought going to Arkansas was going to be what he wanted me to do. It looked like everything just went together, but uh, it didn't work out very good. But then again, it's not over yet. So uh, keep me in your prayers, people, please. Um, things are going to get rough. I know what's going to happen. I just don't know when. And... Uh, Hopefully, well, hopefully I'm in the Lord's will. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>